There are many claims to the title of fastest gun in the West. I think that in Deadwood, Dakota Territory, I may have met him. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just a moment, we will bring you the latest report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Why stand on the sidelines when CBS News features like The World Tonight take you directly to where the big news stories are breaking? Tonight, tomorrow, and every night, hear eyewitness reports from CBS News overseas correspondents and lively features and interviews with the very people making the news as most of these same CBS radio stations present The World Tonight. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. My remittance, as well as a small check from the London Times, were forwarded to me from Cheyenne. Both reached me at the Mark Hotel in Deadwood, Dakota Territory. I cashed them at the Stebbins and Post Company Bank, and once more solvent, decided to do something about my clothes, which, to say the least, had seen better days. I was directed to a tailor shop, which I found housed in a dilapidated frame building, almost at the end of the main street. A freshly painted sign read, Eli Jackson, Taylor, Outfitters. I went in and was met by a tall, thin youth of 16, 17. He greeted me with a shy grin, bowed stiffly, and said, Afternoon, sir. Can I be of service? And I thought I'd like to buy a new suit. Yes, sir. We got a mighty fine selection. Oh, were you figuring on a Sunday go to meeting suit or maybe just a cow rigging? Ah, uh, well, I'd like to see what you've done. Well, you step right this way, mister. <laughs> Are you, uh, are you Eli Jackson, the tailor? No, sir. I'm a son, Dick. I'll pause up the street for a few minutes, but he'll be right back. I guess maybe you want to wait for him? Well, as a matter of fact, I was thinking of having his suit made. Oh, sure. Oh, well, Pa'll fix you up just fine. He's the best tailor in these parts. You, you want to take a seat? Wait. It'll only be a couple of minutes for sure. All right. You live here in Deadwood, mister? I've been here about a week. Well, now ain't that something. Me and my mom and pa, we got in a week back, too. I guess you can see there's some fixing up to do here. Wasn't much of a place when we moved in, but as soon as we get her straightened around, she'll be the finest store in Dakota. We live in the back. Where do you come from? Oklahoma Territory. Pa heard about the gold strikes in the Black Hills. and He says, with all them folks coming into Deadwood, there's a regular gold mine in Taylor and... Business weren't much back home, so we cut our suspenders and come up here. Sure is a wild, woolly town, ain't it? <laughs> a fair description. You mind my asking, mister, what kind of shooting iron is that? Hmm? Oh, uh, Colt forty-four. How you like it? Well, it's a good gun, serviceable. Uh, I never used one of them. I sure admire to shoot one, though. Well... I got me two old Remington 46s Uncle Amos left to me. But sure is a mess of trouble finding cartridges for them. Used to be cap and ball, you know. Oh. Uh, yeah, and then they fixed them up to shoot rimfire. Say, uh, I still got a few rounds left. Uh, would you like to take a couple of shots? Oh, well, I'm not very... I got a target set up in the back. Then maybe... Oh. Uh, maybe you could give me a turn with yours. <laughs> All right. Ma and Pa, they don't take to my practicing like I do, but I tell them man's got to keep his handy, and ain't that so? And I suppose it rather depends what you're practicing for. Well, I ain't practicing to be no short trigger man, mister. Uh, Mr. Kendall. Uh, Mr. Kendall? 
But like Uncle Amos used to say, if there's going to be a corpse and cartridge occasion, it's best you learn to roll your gun first. <laughs> Either that or stay out of the way of corpse and cartridge occasions. Uh, that ain't always so easy. Uncle Amos, he got himself dry gulched back in Oklahoma. He sure was a peaceable man, too. All right, keep him hanging in here. Ma won't let me keep no guns in my room. You know how women are. Yes, yes, I know. Hmm. Those are pretty hefty guns. Yeah, but they got real smart balance. Action smooth down just fine, too. Now, target's over there. You want to try her out? Oh, yes, I'd like to. Uh, I, I do my practice from here. I paste it off about 25 feet. Well, from the looks of it, you're quite a shot. Well, I can do better, Mr. Kendall. Right now, I'm working on my draw. It's still a mite slow. Did you put those shots in the bullseye from a draw? Oh, sure. From the hip, or did you take time to aim? Oh, from the hip, but I, I figure I'm still taking too much time. Oh, no, no, no. They say accuracy is more important than speed. Those are rather old models you're using, you know. Well, I'd sure like to see you try that 44, you know. Maybe I could learn something. <laughs> no, not much from me, I'm afraid. I'll have a go. Here, hold your guns. Yes, sir. Ah, now. All right. You say the word, I'll draw. Ready? Now. <laughs> Not bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's mighty fine shooting, Mr. Kendall. Thank you. Let me see you try. Oh, no, no, I guess not. Come on. No, no oh, I reckon not. Go so. on, put on the belt. I'm curious to see how you handle those relics. Yes, sir. I should think they'd be a little heavy for you. Yeah, they were at first, but I kind of got used to them. Of course, I can't shoot both at once. No, I've never yet seen a man who could with any accuracy. Say, uh, maybe we'd better get back inside. I guess Pa ought to be back by now. In a minute, I want to see how you hit those bullseyes. Yes, sir. Ready? Yes, sir. All right. Now you draw when I say the word. Draw. <laughs> uh, may I see your gun? Yes, sir. How many bullets did you have in there? Five. Is the other gun loaded? Do, 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 you, do you mind doing that again? I guess so. Good Lord. Heard our road show starring Tennessee Ernie? You ought to. It reflects Ernie's warm personality right down the line. Young Molly B. and Doris Drew alternate as the featured feminine vocalists on the show. Join us on most of these same stations tomorrow for CBS Radio's easygoing road show starring Tennessee Ernie. It's as refreshing as a visit back home. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen. Twice, in a little more than one second, this boy had drawn, fanned the hammers of his ancient guns, and put five bullets in a six-inch circle from a distance of 25 feet. Now he stood, eyes downcast, obviously uncomfortable. I guess, I guess we'd better see if Pa's back. Dick, why didn't you want to show me how you shoot? Well, I, I figured maybe you'd be mad not buy a suit of clothes from Pa. We sure need the business. I feel like a bit of a fool. I'm certainly not mad. Odd might be the word. Who taught you to draw like that? Uncle Amos. Mm. He must have been quite handy with a gun himself. Oh, he, he was good. But he said I was better. He'd have his bristles up right now if he'd seen me showing off to you. Uncle Amos always said, never show a man your draw unless you mean it, because someday you might have to throw down with him. Now, you listen to me, young friend. You'll never have to worry about that with me. I have no wish to commit suicide. Dick? Out back, Ma. Come inside, quick. Your pa's been hurt. Huh? What's the matter? Pa? It's all right, Pa. It's all right. Hey, help me get him laid down on the sofa, son. Yeah, let me help. Who 
are you? He's Mr. Kendall, Pa. Came in for to buy some clothes. Easy now, but put your weight on me. What happened? What happened, Ma? Hush up, Dick. Doctor should be along directly, Eli. Now you rest comfortable. Mm-hmm. Is it still bleeding? Yeah, I guess so. Ma? He's been shot. Miss Jackson, get some clean rags, tear up a shirt. We've got to stop the bleeding. Yes. Pa? Not pa! Don't you get to fretting, boy. This looks worse than it is, huh? I ain't gonna die. Dick, help me get his jacket off. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Pa? Pa! He, he's dead, mister. Uh, he, he's fainted. Get some water on to boil. The doctor will need it when he takes out the bullet. You sure, you sure he ain't dead? I tell you, he's fainted. Now do as you're told. Mm. Mm. Here. I had some sheeting put away for bandages. That's... Oh. It's all right. He'll come around. He's so white. Loss of blood. Have you got any whiskey? No. Eli's not a drinking man. Mm. You said the doctor's on his way. Yes. Somebody went to call him. There. Uh, hold those against his shoulder. It ought to stop the bleeding. Oh, yes. Uh, no, don't try to move, Mr. Jackson. Lie back, dear. Well, I, I feel some better. I guess I went on for a couple of minutes. I'm truly thankful for your help, mister. It's all right. Afraid you're going to have to wait a bit for your suit, though, less than you're willing to wear ready-made. Oh, don't worry about that. Just lie quietly. That fella, he had no cause, no cause. Paul. I know, dear. It'll I know. be again the law. Man's got no right. <laughs> How did it happen, Mrs. Jackson? Well, we'd gone to the warehouse to get some bolts of cloth. A couple of drunks come out of Gerber's saloon, start shooting and deviling around. They seen Eli and me coming down the street. I seen one fella a couple of days back. He he come in here to buy a pair of boots. Crowley's his name. I, I didn't have nothing cheap enough, and he didn't have the money. Didn't look like the kind I'd give credit, so he went off without his boots. They was drunk, Eli. He didn't do it purposeful. The bullet must have hit a rock or something and bounced uh, maybe, up. Maybe. Who was the other fella, Pa? Boy, what are you doing with that gun belt on? You know your ma and me's told you never to bring it in the house. Oh, well, I was our back showing Mr. Kendall. You Kendall's... never mind what you was doing and showing. You go hang up them guns this minute, you hear? Do as your pa says. Now, you've seen what guns can do to your Uncle Amos. Uh, now, me. Don't excite now, yourself, Eli. I ain't exciting myself. I ain't gonna have that boy turn into killer. I ain't, pa. No now, such don't you thing. talk back to me, boy. I'll strip the hide off on Lie you. Come back, Eli. Dick, do as your pa tells you. Go on. Now. I know, baby. Did you put the water on the boil? Yeah. Good. Now, why don't you go and see if the doctor's coming? Yeah, yeah, all right. Now you take off them guns and belt. But I... Boy, when I get up, I'm going to thrash your backside, I am for sure. You're just getting too big for your britches. Please, son, can't you see what you're doing to your pa? Do like he says. I'm sorry, but I saw what happened to Uncle Amos. Well, ain't no one going to shoot my pa and get away with it. Boy, you come back here. Dick! Dick! Don't worry, I'll get him. You tell him it was an accident. What, no real shooting? Dick! It was an accident. Dick! Dick! Wait, I want to talk to you. Now slow down, young fella. Don't hold on to me, Mr. Kendall. I got a thing to do. And I'll use your head. You can't fight two grown men. If I got to, I can. I mean, nobody around here thinks I'm big enough to You're use a gun. Big enough shooting at a target is a little different facing a man. I ain't afeard. I didn't say you were. But you go looking for trouble with a couple of drunks, you're going to get hurt. Mister, I'm 17. I was there last year when my Uncle Amos died. The blood running out of him. They shot him in the back because he was like my pa. He'd put up his guns and weren't going to fight no more. Uncle Amos, he said to me, just before he turned on his side, he said, boy, whenever you see a coward with a gun, you get scared. You get scared enough to go for yours before he gets his out. Pa's always preaching about living peaceable. All right, well, if they won't let you live that way, you've got to make them let you. Your father said it was an accident. Did you hear him? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I heard what he said about that fella Crowley coming to the store for boots and Pa not giving him credit. It's true, I was in the store. That Crowley had it in for Pa. Well, we're going to live in this town. Folks is going to have respect for the Jacksons. Pa don't care none. I do. Supposing you do find them, what are you going to do? To start shooting? I'll give them a chance to draw. Dick, will you listen to me? I ain't listening to nobody, Mr. Kendall. My Pa's been hurt bad. I aim to pay the man out that done it. So don't you go trying to stop me. Who 
says you can't be in and out at the same time? Every Monday through Friday on CBS Radio's House Party, Art Linkletter invites you out right in your own home, office, or car. House Party is just what the name implies. It's loaded with fun and surprises. It's one place you can be sure you'll meet new and exciting people. Remember, CBS Radio's House Party is a standing invitation to a good time. It's yours for the listening five times a week on most of these same stations. I walked up the Deadwood Street with young Dick Jackson, the two old 46s slapping heavily on his thin young legs. I knew that I could have physically stopped him, carried him back to his parents, but I also knew that it would have solved nothing, perhaps only made matters worse. So I did the only thing I could do. I went with him, first to Gerber's saloon, then to half a dozen others, looking for the man named Crowley and his companion. An hour later, we found him in the Deadwood Saloon. That's Crowley. That's the one. Over to the bar. You know what you're doing. I know. You know what it's like to shoot a man to kill him? I guess I'm going to find out, Mr. Kendall. You said you weren't practicing to be a short trigger man. That was a lie. No. Shooting at a target hasn't been enough. You've just been waiting for an excuse. That ain't so. Get out of my way. Dick. (laughs) Boy, now you ain't never seen nothing like it. He shows up in this here dance. Public as a zebra, wearing a fried shirt, a hard-boiled hat, and a smell of bear grease and lavender-flavored soap. <laughs> I tell you, he looked as miserable as a razorback hog that's dropping himself on a fence post. <laughs> hey, well, look here. Hey, boys. Come over here, have a look, see. Hey, what you carrying there, son? Buffalo guns. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boy, don't you know packing them great big old heavy things that like to make you a bow legged for your time? <laughs> Crowley, if you just shut up my paw, our back, I aim to kill you for it. You kidding that there mealy mouth tailor down the street? Boy, I might have known. Mealy mouth, little son. Mr. Crowley, I'm going to put my gun back now. Next time I unshuck it, you better draw your own self, because I ain't going to be doing no fancy trick shooting a glass out of your hand. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Boy, yeah, you sure are fast, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but you just a kid. Now, I ain't got no quarrel with no kid. You gunned my pa. Oh, no, that, that there was an accident. Now, me and Loba here, we was just having some fun, and your pa, well, he come waltzing up with the missus, and he kind of got in the way of a bullet is all. It wasn't nobody's fault. You gonna draw? Loby, you tell a kid, ain't it the truth? Sure it did. Didn't mean no harm. Uh, mister, you with the kid here? Yes. Well, you get him out of here, huh? No, I don't think so. I want to see his face when he kills you. You loco. I'm a newspaper man. It's my job to write about such things. The birth of a killer. He can draw and empty his gun before you can even get yours out, Crowley. He knows it, too. That's why he's going to be a very important killer. He might even be as famous as Billy the Kid. Go for your gun, Crowley. He's waiting. He wants the excuse to see you die. If you don't, he'll kill you anyway. Oh, that ain't so. It ain't uh, so. Now, now, look, mister. Kid, kid. I'm, I'm sorry about your pa, huh? I, I'm sorry for what I said. <laughs> ain't no sense of getting riled. I got a few dollars. Help pay for the doctor and all. He doesn't want that. He wants to be able to go home, tell his father and his mother what he's done. Show them what a big man he is. He can shoot a gun. Kill. That'll make him very grown up. No, no, that ain't why. I told you it ain't. Now, here, kid. Now, you you take this. It's 40 bucks. You get that to your old man. It'll pay for the doctors and such. I got me a little strike a couple days back, you see. You tell him I'll be in and buy the best suit of clothes and custom-aids he's got in the store. 
You tell him that now, will you? We don't want your money. You stay away from us, you hear? And if you don't, I'll be back. Oh, sure, boy, anything you say. Give me the money, Crowley. I'll see his father gets it. Yeah, you do that! Huh? Dick, look out! Crowley had pushed me off balance and had gone for his gun. The boy was at the door 20 feet away, his back turned. Crowley fired, and in that same instant, Dick whirled and shot back. He shattered a bottle on the bar. Both had missed. I was only six feet away. My two bullets took away half of Crowley's face. I took the boy back to his father's place. The doctor had removed the piece of lead in Eli Jackson's shoulder, and he was resting more comfortably. Well, I'm glad you found him, Mr. Kendall, before there was any trouble. There was trouble, Mr. Jackson, but it wasn't his fault. He didn't do any shooting. No, he didn't kill anybody. He didn't hurt anybody. Dad, I want you to take Uncle Amos' guns. Sell them. I don't want them. No guns. <laughs> ever. Shucks, boy. I, I couldn't get two bits on them old things. You, you figure you've had enough play out of them. You, you just hang them up. Show them to your grandchildren someday. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Mr. Kendall, will you be in Deadwood for a while? Yes, for a while. Well, now, that, that's just fine. I tell you, you come on back in a couple of days, I, I'll be up and around, and I'd sure like to make you a fine suit of clothes. Thank you, I will. Dick, you show Mr. Kendall out? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Kendall, I'm sorry. It's all right. I might have been killed. You might. You was right about shooting a man being different from a target. I could shoot the glass out of his hand because I knew that didn't mean nothing. But I couldn't kill him. Killing's ugly. You saw what Crowley looked like. I saw. You should have remembered what your uncle told you. Never show a man you're drawn as you mean it. Someday you might have to throw down with him. I'm sorry I didn't remember it. But I won't need to again. I promise you, Mr. Kendall. Well, I'll take your word for it, Dick. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Eddie Firestone, Stacey Harris, Jack Crucian, and Ben Wright. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. Bud Sewell speaking.